How is everyone? Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I've not actually been part of one of the book clubs through the Arthur Data Science thing yet. I don't know whether any of you have done the advanced R or the tidy modeling thing. Yeah, I'm in um, the advanced R club, but um, I joined a bit later. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty advanced by the time you joined. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't realize before that uh, there was something like that, and they already started. Yeah. But I guess, um, I don't know, we can also introduce ourselves. Oh, yeah, yeah, by all means. <laughs> yeah. Then I just start. <laughs> um, so I'm Anne. I'm a biologist from my background. I'm working as a bioinformatician right now or data analyst in a lab that's working with neurons. And... Yeah, since uh, all my colleagues are wet lab scientists, um, I'm trying to make the data more accessible for them. And that's why I want to get better with Shiny and um, yeah, learn how to enable them to work with their data. <laughs> I can go next. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Priyanka. Um, I am based out of Boston. <clears throat> Um, and I come with um, computer science and MBA and economics degrees. Um, I'm currently work as business come uh, data analyst for a health and wellness app here in Boston. And uh, I've been doing a lot of shiny. I mean, I've always wanted to do shiny for a, from the time I figured, you know, it's an R thing. And finally, I've got a chance to do a lot of it. So I'm, I'm so happy and excited and I'm happy to join this club. Uh, I can go next. Uh, hi, my name is Arnab. I uh, am based out of San Diego, California. Uh, I'm a PhD student in public health. I also work at the Center on uh, Gender Equity and Health uh, on campus. Uh, I have started picking R uh, over the last one year, and I always wanted to uh, learn how to make shiny apps. And it's really timely that this cohort is starting because uh, I am about to uh, start a project where I take the data that we collect and turn it into a, a web-based app. So I'm really excited. Thanks. Yeah, I can go next. Uh, my name is Dave. I'm from Germany. We are, uh, we are fr uh, Frankfurt. And yeah, I'm doing a little data analytics on my job. My background is in mathematics and uh, yeah, um, I like to use Shiny uh, for my personal projects. I already built some Shiny apps, but I didn't get into the concept uh, pretty deep. So I hope uh, I will learn something here. I can go next. Hi, so I'm Jessica. I'm calling in from Nairobi, Kenya. I work as an environmental modeler. And yes, I, I haven't built a Shiny app. But um, also, as pre previously mentioned, I have some data that I want to uh, to be able to display in a web-based app. So yeah, and thank you, thank you for organizing this. <laughs> well, that's quite right. I, um, can I? I might as well introduce myself. Then I'm I'm Russ. I I was a bioinformatician, uh, similar to Anna, um, up until kind of summer of last year and I've been just kind of doing freelance data analysis sort of stuff since then um, and I'm keen to learn shiny simply because there's um, because I don't know a great deal about web development and it seems like a neat way to get data analysis stuff um, out there for people to play with um, but yeah uh, so so that's kind of why I ended up um, proposing that we run this. Uh, but yeah, sorry, I've been a mentor with, with the Alpha Data Science thing for a, for a year or two. Um, um, yeah, and we're always looking for more mentors if anyone um, wants to join in. Now, the, there is, um, there is a, a, a GitHub repository for, the, for this book club, um, which will be 
updating as the weeks go by, you know, putting the presentations up and, and things like that. Um, if anyone's keen to do a presentation, we're still uh, we're we're looking for people to do presentations on everything from chapter five onwards in the book. So um, yeah, if you've if if you if you're keen to do a presentation, please uh, put put yourself forward either in the chat here or um, in the Slack um, book club channel. Um, anyway. Um, if anyone else wants to introduce themselves, um, feel free. Hello. Uh, I am Orhan from Istanbul, Turkey. Um, as a um, statistician uh, and transportation planner as a background, but uh, I've been uh, very close with data analyzers uh, for years, but uh, for the uh, R and the uh, this re reproducible data analysis. I, I'm kind of new, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, as uh, some of you said, um, I uh, I try to uh, gain some skills on Shiny because uh, to to uh, show and present the results of the uh, data analysis uh, to the uh, to, to the audience or uh, whoever uh, whoever is uh, whoever the data analyst for so that's it in a nutshell thanks hey I'm Tan um, I'm a mentor um, at OpenDS I do a little bit of sh so I actually learned R because I had a friend who was building an app and uh, building a shiny app and I wanted to help him like adjust stuff because I was like an end user with Excel and so I actually knew no R before I started doing shiny and then like from shiny started working my way back through R through the tidyverse and then and then from shiny to R to tidyverse and now eventually into tidy modeling so I'm kind of like the backwards path for everyone here I think um, I answer a lot of shiny questions in the slack um, love shiny it's great I, do, I currently do um, data apps for work um, that's basically my job right now, um, and really, really, really enjoy it. Um, I can't promise to be here for a lot of these meetings. It's kind of an inconvenient time for Ottawa, Canada, which is where I'm based. Um, but uh, I'll try to pop in every now and then as much as I can. Um, and uh, really glad to see everybody doing Mastering Shiny. I can. Uh go. Uh, I'm Sarah. I am from uh, Alberta, Canada. So also kind of middle of my day right now. But um, yeah, I am a statistician at the University of Alberta. Uh, and I've got a couple of uh, R packages um, that we're building that I think are going to lend themselves really well to a uh, user interface. So I think it's a yeah, perfect time to get on the shiny train. Looking forward to it. Uh, in now I'm Leo. I'm Sarah's teammate, so I am joining in to also be a part of building some shiny apps as a part of what we do in R. Great. Is that everyone? Um, is anyone not gone? Uh, I am. I'm Morgan. Uh, <laughs> I can't see you. I, I joined a little late. Um, forgive my appearance. Uh, it's snowing outside in Oklahoma, which means we have rolling blackouts going. So it's very chilly. <laughs> so I do have clothes on underneath this rope. It's just very cold. <laughs> um, I'm a retention specialist at Northeastern State University. And I'm excited to learn Shiny because um, as far as I know, I'm the only one at my institution that uses R. And so I, uh, I'm excited to learn Shiny so that I can build, 
this is my son. Um, uh, build shiny apps for my colleagues to use and dig into the data. All right. Um, so my name is Shamsuddin and I'm from Nigeria. Um, I'm a graduate student and I actually um, started using R last year um, because I was using Python, but my graduate advisor he was in R and we need to find a way to communicate and understand each other. So I started using R and now here I am to learn Shiny. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, I think that's possibly everyone. So should we introduce Jerome, um, who's going to be speaking today um, uh, on the second chapter of Mastering Shiny. Um, the reason we've skipped past the first chapter is that it's it's largely a, a kind of preface about you know why you would use shiny and the um tools you'll need to install to 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 work through the book so there was very little content um in there so we've nipped past it so if jerome is there oh sorry is hyper wanting to introduce themselves ah. okay so Jerome, if you'd like to take over, you're muted at the moment, but. Um... Yeah, okay. Is, is, is Hyper need to introduce himself? Is everyone, oh, is yeah, everyone I... happy? Um, that will be me. Um, hello. Hi. Hi, um, my name is Federica. I'm from Italy. I'm quite new. Um, using R and R Studio, and I just bumped it on uh, uh, an app, a shiny app. So I really like it to uh, be able to manage uh, sorts of things. And um, I've made a dashboard. I just modified from from a, a template, and so I'm here to to get more. Um, insights about this uh, um, uh, th these applications. Thank you for, for the group. Yeah, so uh, Jerome, if you'd like to take over, um, how, how would you like, if, if anyone's got a question during your um, talk, are they free to just kind of shout up if, that, if that's okay? Yeah. 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 Great. Okay. Do you I want just, to take over then? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, don't be shy. Just jump in if you've got a question. Um, we can also save a little bit of time at the end to to kind of run through a couple of bits if helpful. Um, okay. Well, firstly, a bit about me. I'm my name's Jerome. I am a I'm actually in the process of transitioning roles. So I kind of work in this at the moment in a technology consultancy. Um, I've been working mainly with like digital data, customer intelligence, that kind of thing for probably going on to a few many more years than I'd like to admit, um, maybe about 10. And, um, and I've been trying to learn, well, I've been sort of, you know, I came to a point maybe in 2015 where I was kind of felt that I'd, be left behind a little bit if I didn't learn how to program. Um, so I started, to, went straight in trying to learn R and base R and, and frankly struggled. Um, then made a little jump into Python for a little bit. And then I found when Tidyverse came around a few years later, I kind of accelerated um, quite a bit. So I've been kind of using R as a data that my main tool for a few years now. Um, it's only really the last year, so last year, where I started to um, use Shiny a bit. And I'd kind of been just leaving it as another thing to learn. Um, but yeah, I am, um, actually I did a course. So there's a guy called Matt Dancho who runs something called Business Science. Um, so I did one of his courses and actually he's really one of the big proponent of, you know, one of the main things we need to be doing as data professionals is getting our work in the hands of people and in the hands of users. And um, so anyway, that was kind of my initial impotence to learn a bit of Shiny. Um, 
And last year I did a couple of kind of work projects. Both kind of went well, but at all times I felt like I was sort of winging it and sort of learning as, as I go. So um, yeah, I think this would be a good point to kind of come back and work through this book and work through it with a group. With a group. Uh, okay, well, I will share my screen. So we got the, so there's a new format for these slides, which um, I think John and the guys have been trying out for the, the um, Tidy Modeling Book Club. So I've had a stab at them like last night, so they're a bit lean, but I think it's, I think I've done them the right job. Um, so it, it's kind of like, so this is the, um, this is the thing that Russ kind of alluded to. There's this GitHub repository. So um, I'll kind of merge my slides into here. But the general idea is that we kind of create a, um, it's almost like creating like a study guide from our slides. Um, so my slides are here. So essentially in, in our markdown, it's quite easy. There's just a couple of, so John's got a template and as you build it up, it auto creates these little um, headers. So without further ado, I guess I've tried to have a stab at some learning objectives for chapter two. Um, as Ross said, it's basically a, you know, it's really a, a sort of a demo of kind of, you know, probably the leanest version of a shiny app that you can build. Um, do we, actually first is a question, does anyone feel, does everyone feel comfortable around what Shiny is and sort of why you'd use it and what it's kind of designed to do? Um, those are just a couple of bits which is touched on in chapter one. Because we could talk about them briefly, if, that's, if that would be helpful for anyone. A brief overview would be good, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's do it. I mean, I think it's, so, you know, there's a bit of, there's some good words in here. There's quite a lot of words here. Um, I guess in, in, my, in my mind, like it's really a framework for people like us, um, so data people to write and create web apps, but just using R. And so, you know, and I think it's solving a problem of historically being quite hard to create, you know, a custom application that people can use via the browser without, you know, a lot of specialist knowledge, so HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Um, so it's really designed with data scientists, data analysts in mind. Um, and it takes away a lot of the, the hassle of, of basically trying to do that. Um, and then through the RStudio ecosystem, there's packages and services that support with hosting um, and, you know, make, make the whole process fairly simple. Um, and it kind of like in under the hood, and we'll have a little demo of a really basic app, it kind of worked and it's, you know, it's most of it works in a similar way to how you, how R works. And you can, you know, in a lot of cases you can pull out you know, a function or a chart from a script and then embed it in Shiny. Um, but there are a couple of few things which don't quite work the same. So um, yeah, it, it does require a little bit of a, um, there's a few things that which are unique. Um, and yeah, the, I just lost my train of thought. Um, and yeah, oh, yeah, that's it. And I guess, you know, as you write the, Really, the Shiny just translates our code and it just generates HTML. So I think, you know, if you run a sh some Shiny code outside of our studio, outside of an app.r file, it will just generate HTML. Um, so then the only other thing I'd say on, on this bit is then, you know, in, but it's not just limited to, you know, contrived sort of um, HTML generation. Like if you do know, those web languages, or you have someone who, who you've got access to someone who does, you know, you can get in and you can, in the same workflow as your R codes, you can write HTML, you can input custom JavaScript, you can, you know, so actually it's not like a limited tool. It could actually be extended to as far as you want it, which is one of the great things I think. Um, um, yeah, one of the work projects we did last year, which I can't really show, but um, 
we did actually get a front end developer to come in and we had maybe about a week of her time and she kind of like basically made it look good. Um, and sort of, I worked in a little team where we had um, a designer as well, who then so actually designer kind of defined the vision and look and feel. I did all the data plumbing and the work. Um, and then the front end developer made the design look, look good. Um, anyway, let's not go. I guess yes. Yeah. So in in a nutshell, it it's just it helps us people like us to build build apps. Um, sound sound okay? Makes sense. Cool. All right. Um, so yeah, we don't want to take up too much time on this part, but I think these are kind of as I see it, the learning objectives. So it runs through creating a very simple shiny app. Like I said, it's kind of the leanest version of an app you can build. Um, we'll have a little look and maybe do a little demo of ways to just start and stop the app. Um, it also runs through the two key components of every Shiny app. Um, and then it has, it starts to introduce the concepts of how you connect up those components um, and how Shiny actually reacts to user input. Um, yeah, so I think if you jump straight into the, like the two key components of a shiny app, if everyone can see that, I can maybe make that a bit bigger. Um, are the UI and the server. Um, and so like in terms of the app.r file, it's literally just those two things along with their little command to execute it. Um, <clears throat> and then we'll touch on this idea of reactive programming, which I've tried to kind of make it as simple as possible. It literally is just, there is a user input and then Shiny recognizes that thing, that input, and then it changes something. Um, so it can, it basically, it, it can, it recalculates and then it will change whatever you've put into your sort of UI, whether it's a table, a chart, there's a whole load of stuff you can, you can drop in there. Um, in the book, it's just got some, you know, basic stuff around. If you've installed Shiny, you can check which package you are. I think in the book it recommends that you're on version 1.5.0 or higher. Um, so we'll just have a little whistle stop tour through this and then we'll kind of just basically walk through this demo of creating this really simple app. Um, but this is, I mean, this is the minimum amount of, um, amount of code that you need to run an app. Um, Maybe let's just do it side by side, actually, because it might be a bit, a bit more, maybe make a bit more sense. So in this in this section of the book 2.2, it says, you know, there's a few different ways to create an app. Um, simplest way is just create a new directory. And actually, in our studio, if everyone can still see my screen, you see our studio now. Okay, great. Um, you can, you know, it's as simple as creating a new. And then now you've got these options here, so you can just create a shiny web app. Um, it will automatically create a folder for you. I guess one important thing is, um, yeah, you need to kind of isolate the code, the files that for the Shiny app, and it's, it's good practice to keep them distinct from, say, other things you might have in a project. Um, so now I've got this little demo chapter two file, and within it, there's the app.r file. Um, so you can, you can split these files and you can have two files, a UI file and a server file. Um, I think for simple things, it's, sim it's much simpler to just have it all in one place. But be aware that as you, you know, unless you take steps and there are things you can do to control kind of complexity, but it can get these app single files can get quite big and unwieldy quite quickly. Um, but so it's already got some boilerplate, but let's use our example. Um, and yeah, so then the quickest way, there's a run app file. I mean, you can sort of select it all. BFF. You can build them up in stages, but I don't think that's a really recommend a, a, um, a good thing to do. Um, so you can just run that. And then that's the most basic thing. Um, 
just says hello world. So, but that is a web application and you know, you can tell this, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the HTTP addresses, but this first bit just says, it's a standard one, the, everything up to that first one is just a standard address that says local computer or this computer. And then it will randomly generate this last four digits. So if I drop these into a browser, I can press that actually, um, it will just create the app in browser. And so when you're working in your local environment, you've got different ways, different stages that you can open up the app and play around with it. Yeah, yeah that's that. Um, and yeah, in the book, it runs through just being clear on, on everyone that you sort of understand what each of these bits do. So there's four tasks here. You load the library, you define the UI. And in this case, so this little page is a function, we'll touch on it in the UI controls, but all you're doing is literally printing some text. Um, then you specify the behavior of the app and the server. So there's no behavior in this one, but this is the function placeholder. And then when you press run app, it will, this, this um, call basically executes um, and constructs the app and starts it. Um, I, um, I think we've got a question in the, oh, sorry, uh, is it Shamsuddin? Yeah, so my question is, um, so the UI is said it's built um, using fluid page. So, and um, every shiny UI is built with this function or we have many functions to build the UI? Uh, so, yeah, it's a good, so I guess this, this bit here, so assign yeah. something to UI, so this, so you have to use, that's the other thing to probably mention, you have to use this terminology, so it has to be called UI in that format, it has to be called server. So these, these things will never change really, um, but what you put inside them is completely up to you. All right. And my question is, this function fluid page is the one that is used to construct UI for every shiny app. It is static, you don't need to change any function. Um, <clears throat> do you mean this thing, the fluid page? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, no, that, that can change. Yeah, there's, there's lots of different versions of that. Um, so, yeah, yeah, but that, that, and then that's where in, I think in the book when there's bits for going through the UI, um, there are different, um, yeah, there are different types of um, ways that you can initialize the, um, the UI basically. And so there's a lot of pre-built sort of frameworks that you can kind of borrow from. And so there's some, um, that might create, you know, auto create tabs, for example. There's there's a few different things that you can that you can use. I think this first one is just the most basic one. Cool. Um, okay, makes sense. Yeah, I think we can. Yeah, maybe let's 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 come back to that. And we can have a little look at a few different examples. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and then, yeah, you've got, rather than pressing reload, you've got this keyboard shortcut. Um, I think this sort of stuff is, yeah, we've just kind of run through different ways to open the app. Um, I guess one thing to show is, um, so when the app's running, you'll notice that our studio is busy and the console's busy. So actually it's, it's um, yeah, so, it, and it, and it gives you this message as well. So you listening on HTTP and you can't execute any commands in the console. Um, so you can either, you know, you can, there's different ways you can close it. You can just press the stop button. Um, you can close the window and, um, and that's it. Uh, 
but you but you also think I think says you don't need to. So if you're working on it, you've got it loaded. You I guess the workflow is really like you write some code, you have a look at it visually. You might want to make some changes. So good thing within our studio is you've got this reload up button. So then you can make a change and then reload it, and then you can keep that window open if you want to. Um, we'll just we'll just stop it for now, and then when you stop it, it just stops and and now it goes back to normal. Um, <clears throat> Um, what is, sorry, um, so I want to ask a question. What is the function of this control for a chip plus enter keyboard? What does it do? Because I tried, I, I cannot understand the function. Ah, yeah, so these are just like keyboard shor shortcuts for running the app. So it might depend on which, on if you're on a um, Mac or Windows. Um, so if you're on a Windows laptop, it will be Control plus Shift plus Enter, um, and then you replace Control with command with commands if you're on a Mac. So um, I would just do Command Shift Enter, and then that just runs. That just basically just yeah, presses the Run App button for me. So it's yeah, if you I mean keyboard, keyboard shortcuts are generally easier if you can remember them. Um, cool. And then in the book, yeah, they kind of touch on, you know, again, another pretty simple example of, you know, it's sticking with this still the same fluid page, um, but now adding a little bit of functionality to it. Um, so as we touched on just now, the first bit is it's a layout function um, that defines a visual structure of the page. Then there's three new functions that we've added in here. The first one is, so generally when anything that mentions input um, will be like shiny sort of trying to be clear that this is something a user can interact with. Um, and then you are basically just building up the, the look and feel of the page. So in this, in this one, again, let's just borrow this and demo it. Um, so now we get rid of our hello world and we do that. Command shift enter. Well, it'll give you a little prompt to save. And now it's just created. So the, this thing, select input, is basically an input field. And there's there's um there's some good resources on the R Studio website. There's um, loads of different components that you can use. Um, this is just one of them. So it allows the user to select from a list. And so in that call, in that function call, you define where this list comes from. You can also define some behaviors. You know, for some input fields, you can have um, one um, input at a time. For others, you can have like, multiple inputs. There's yeah, a, lot of, a lot of flexibility. Um, but you know, so now, now I've, I've set, I selected that, nothing's happened. Um, and that is because we haven't put anything in this server yet. So you've got stuff in the UI, but it's not connected to anything. So Shiny doesn't know, Shiny doesn't do anything. So these inputs, think about that flow, the little flow chart, these inputs aren't connected to an output yet. Um, oh, too many things. Um, but then, then the next step of the book is going into this, um, how you bring the outputs to life. Um, <clears throat> and I said, and I guess the one important thing to think about is that it's, it really tells this idea of reactive programming. It just, it's like a recipe. It just tells Shiny how to do something. Um, it doesn't execute it at the time. And I think, I think there's more on reactivity and on chapter four. Um, the basic idea is that you you don't want to have to rerun everything every time, um, like constantly. So it sort of uh, you'll come back to that because I think we touched on reactive expressions um, next. But yeah, the general idea is that you don't want to kind of keep rerunning everything. So Shiny kind of lets you cache some information and only change it when the input changes again. Um, so in the book, they've got a little bit of extra. Um, code to put into our server function. 
And now this should, and actually I've kept the window open so we can try reloading it. I didn't save it. Great. Error sourcing. Okay, well I'll just close that and start again. Oh, it looks like, oh, I've lost the, So I just I chopped off a bit at the end there. So save that and then run the app. And now this is those two outputs that we defined. So now it's so this output, this next one is basically just text and it says um, yeah, return the summary. Um, and then this is something called table. So these names as well are really important and they need to match the server. This is where the link to the server happens. So this thing that you've put in this output in the UI is defined in the server. So that's the first thing we define. And the, um, yeah, so Shiny has this output and input link. So anything that is, to, that is output dollar name, you can then bring into the UI and then that's how the UI knows what to call. Um, and you then also have this input element. So the input is comes from here. Um, so all that means is we can, oh, sorry. And then there's on the table, then the next thing in the UI. So there's three things in the UI, a select field, a summary output and a table. And um, the table is defined here in the server. Um, so what I should be able to net do now, if I change the data set, look at Anscom protect, then this, it will show a summary. So I think it looks like it's literally just calling the summary function and then a table and you know, keep going, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's sort of, I think again, it'll happen, touch on more in reactivity in chapter four, but it appears to be happening instantaneously, which is one of the really good things about Shiny. Um, but when you dig under the hood, it doesn't actually happen completely instantaneously. It's almost um, that effect is kind of simulated. Uh, all right, so oh yeah, and there's uh, basically here you'll notice this kind of common format. So it's yeah, it's really just render then type. And there are a few different types of out outputs that you can, that Shiny allows you to create by, um, by default. Um, so render prints for text, render table, there's also um, render plots, there's one for images, and you can actually, um, yeah, beyond this scope of this chapter, but you can, you can actually render different input components that, and you can have sort of chained logic. Um, we won't get into that now. Um, I've already done that bit. I think I moved that. And then the next bit then is then, so we've got these two, we've got these two things now connected up. So our UI and server. And so actually now that works as, as the, in the scope of this, of this application. Um, but you'll notice there's a bit of duplication of code and you were calling this, um, input twice. Um, so, and then this then is where, um, you know, in good programming practice, you know, to as much as possible, reduce duplication. I'm sure you don't, you don't repeat yourself, repeat yourself. Um, but also I think it's, in my view, it's particularly bad for shiny apps. And for that reason that, and actually I should caveat here, and I think I do, that the latest release, which I've not really explored, sounds like it's got some improved debugging functionality. But um, in my experience, it can be quite difficult to debug Shiny apps and as they get bigger and more complex, keeping track of all these like these links in logic is pretty tricky. Um, so in this, there's a simple example um, here and essentially the reactive expression is just something that you add to the server. Um, and it kind of, 
So in normal R programming, you can use variables and you can use functions to kind of remove, um, to remove duplication in your code. Um, doesn't really work. They don't really work exactly the same in Shiny. Um, and so you have to introduce this thing called reactive, a reactive expression. Um, and basically once you do that, it will work a bit like a standard function, but as I touched on earlier, it only runs once and then it sort of stores the results until your input changes. Um, so this now is the same as we defined it, but you'll notice these two, well, these are the two same two outputs, but the, the code is now a lot cleaner. Um, and it's, it's like that because we've kind of pulled out this bit here where we're getting the data set and we are pulling it into this thing called a reactive expression, which has this structure and it's, it's brackets um, with curly brackets within. Um, so we can, let me get the copy and paste a bit right. Um, we can bring that into our app. Save it, command shift enter. Uh, oh, maybe I just reload it. Okay, yeah, actually, yeah. And so basically from a UI point of view, nothing changes and it works exactly the same. Um, but now the code is just a bit more efficient um, and this reactive thing. So you'll notice this reactive thing. So basically we initialize it here um, and this is the same as the what we was going on within the summary and output tables functions before. But now rather than all that, we just have this thing here called data set. And it's really important that you um, declare it like this. So it's basically saying, just call whatever you've defined here as a reactive expression. And just, I want you now to take a summary of whatever that is. Um, and so all the, the changing on input happens here. And this reactive expression controls that. And then the outputs are then simpler um, and nothing's changed in the UI. Um, and then I've tried to kind of visualize that a little bit, so hopefully bring it to life a bit more. Um, so, you know, that previous flow input to output now has this like middle layer um, where we're sort of defining this reactive expression. Um, and, you know, here's just as a little example. So this input is select input, and then we're selecting a data set. It's going via this reactive expression, and then we are um, the output, the table output is just changing, is updating. And um, yeah, I think I had a little stab of like defining that in terms of the context of the UI on the server as well. So it's um, yeah. So the new thing now in the server function is this pink thing, the the reactive expression. Um, We've now got, so this top layer is just the generalized format. So it's input, some ID, that ID matches, this is called in the output. Um, and which is, it's called, I should, I've, this is wrong actually, it is called in this reactive expression and then that reactive expression is called here. Um, so this is right where it's select input data set, um, via the data set reactive, and then that reactive element is called now in your new table output function. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. I think there's the visuals maybe confuse it more, but um, yeah, that, that's that's the basic flow. And I think there's a whole set, there's a whole chapter on, on reactive on reactivity in chapter four, where it goes into a lot more detail. Um, and I recognize this bit can be probably a, a little trickier thing to get your head around initially. Um, okay, I think that's, I probably should pause there because we've got about 15 minutes left. Um, I think we've done everything we wanted to with this demo. Yeah, thanks, Jerome. Um, yeah, no, that was great. Um, so, um, um, yes, um, the reactive expressions will, is in chapter four, I think, and um, I believe Priyanka's 
doing that in two weeks' time. Um, we do have someone speaking next week on the UI um, uh, elements of, of Shiny. So more stuff, you know, related to um, the types of input and output and stuff. Um, but yeah, we're still looking for, for people who might want to, to put together a, a little presentation on one of the chapters for, for future weeks. Um, but yeah, that was really good uh, as a, um, a, a kind of example. Um, and uh, presumably you, you've made a couple of these shiny apps uh over the past you were saying you started doing it a, a year or so ago was that right yeah um, yeah in the summer sort of yeah probably the last seven eight months yeah so is it is it the um um is the bulk of the work when developing shiny <laughs> typically um is it is it largely involved in building the UI and the server, the, the shiny specific stuff, or is it more you, you're typically spending your time building the functions that are called by those uh, things? I don't know. I, I don't know quite how to phrase it, to be honest. Uh, I think you're, yeah, I think you're pretty, 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 pretty close. Um, it's, it's both. It's... Um, I guess the workflow, at least when I sort of was doing it, is I like kind of work it out what I want to do um, and just in an R script and like, you know, if I'm playing around with the visualization, I'll like get it kind of working outside the Shiny um, and then layer it into Shiny and kind of then overlay the bits where you're connecting up inputs and outputs. Um, might not be the best way of doing it. Uh, it sort of worked for me. It seemed to make sense because it, it can add in an extra, particularly when you're learning, I think you can add a lot of extra things yeah. to think about. Um, and you probably want to make sure it works and it is what you, you know, what your stakeholder will find useful, etc., before you get into building an app. Um, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, uh, does anyone in the... Um... Anyone, any of the participants have any other questions? There were a couple of things mentioned in the chat. If uh... yeah, sorry, I didn't, I didn't see this chat at all. So, yes, uh, someone was asking whether the order in which you define the UI statement and the server function is um, uh, important when you're um, writing an app dot r. Yeah, good uh, question. Um, I don't think it is in terms of, well, so firstly, it is and it isn't. So it, it is in terms of, you know, when you get, when you execute that shiny up function at the end, I think that has to be in a specific order. But within the actual, like the app.r file, you can play around with where things go. Um, and I think actually, as you get more complicated, it's better practice to maybe define functions outside of those things and you actually you might have um yeah have a bit of a modular approach and you kind of define components outside functions that are then called within your server um file um because and actually you know you can you can have ui and server in two distinct files as well if you want to i've not really done it that way but yeah maybe you can um, I have another question. Maybe this would be uh, dealt with uh, in the future weeks. But then, uh, do you know if it's easy to develop a shiny app and then host it on an existing website? Uh, that that sort of is set up on WordPress or something like that. Good question. I think so. I'm not sure in terms of like embedding it, kind of like an iframe or something, or or just something more. Oh, no, I, I meant uh, by embedding. I meant uh, hosting it up on uh, up on an existing website, just as an independent yeah. web page. Is is that relatively easy, or? Um, so, I wouldn't say. I don't know. This is one of those things where it gets. I think if you this is then one of those things. Where if you have the knowledge, or you're using a, a platform that makes it easy for you, then it is. Um, but if you don't, it can be a bit of a trick. I think. Um, you know, when we hosted these ones at work, we ended up 
just using the shinyapps.io um, service. Uh, we did actually, I was working with the guys like a, more of a technical architect and he wanted to try and use Heroku um, and he had a good stab at doing it. And I think it was, it was definitely doable and he was able to do it quite easily because he knows how to how that framework works. Um, but the thing which we kind of hit a roadblock with is we needed to add some um, authentication. And so then working out how authentication works within Shiny apps then became quite a big thing that we didn't have time for. Um, so we then went back to Shiny apps because then, and then you just have to pay like a hundred dollars. I think, I think it's $99 a month for the tier that has authentication. Um, yeah. so it kind of depends on what you need, but yeah, no, I think like in terms of the actual app itself, it can be hosted in you know, almost anything you want to, uh, as long as you know how to do that. Thanks. Um, I think there's some questions about, about the exercises. I don't know if anyone wants to talk about those or I've not really done them for the for the full disclosure. Yes, I, I think it's Jessica that's got a question about question four in the exercises. Um, I don't know whether you'd like to speak up, Jessica and um, um, yeah, so I don't know if anyone has actually had a go at them. I, I was on question four, and it is actually based on the reactive expressions and not um, and not basically repeating uh, code. So yeah, I, I, it's I, I think it's a, it's a pretty simple code. I guess it's just the framing and actually then changing it to have the reactive expression is where I'm having a bit of difficulty. So in, in that question, you, you're trying to extract, extract out computing the product of two numbers into a reactive expression. Is that right? Yes, yes. And, and then use that reactive expression it to construct three different uh, products, something, is that right? Yes. Um, yeah, I, I mean, if you'd like to, I mean, you can post your um, your attempts at the exercises in the, the Slack group if you'd like, and we can we can work you through it if, if, if you need. Um, but yeah, uh, um, uh, okay, yeah, that's that sounds yeah. good. I'll probably do that like after the to the call. But yeah, that sounds good. If I don't manage to figure it out, it's <laughs> also a bit late. So yeah, but I will put in this Slack channel. I could also quickly um, share my screen and show how I did it if I, we have time. I mean, it's uh, I think it's quite quick. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, can you see my R? Yeah. Um, so I think uh, the exercise, yeah, you had these, you had this line basically in every, um, in every like output uh, function. And this is what you want to reduce. So you want to make this into a reactive, uh, a reactive expression. Um, and you can simply do this by saying product is uh, reactive input x times input y. So you just put it into this um, reactive container and afterwards you can call it with a product and then parentheses. So it's not like uh, in a normal R script where you would just call the variable product, but you have to use these parentheses. Um, and then you basically just put that in into those three, um, yeah, the, the, those three functions for the outputs. That's that's it. Was that clear? Yeah, that's pretty clear to me. Thank you. Okay. Um, I may have a question about um, the last screen that you just shown. Can you can you put that back? <laughs> so I'll, yes. Because um, yeah, the the, um, uh, the product is uh, now a function. 
with the parentheses? Um, because it, what, yeah. what? <laughs> I think it's not really, I, I'm not quite sure about what you would call it now. I, I think it would be called reactive expression and it just looks like a function, but I, um, or maybe it is also kind of behaving like a function because it's always checking if the input changed and then um, doing that again. But I, I'm not quite sure about that. But is that something that you uh, have put uh, in it because you just have named uh, the reactive uh, um, uh, as a product and then yeah. you you call it again as a function uh, for like making reactive uh, functioning uh, on this uh, i don't know i don't understand because you call it product is that well, right i, I mean Maybe. i could call it anything here i, I that's just the name um and then like product now when you call a uh, reactive like this reactive container product is not just a variable it's an a reactive expression it's just called like that and if you want to access again this reactive expression you need to have these parentheses okay uh, so yeah. it works as a function then inside the the container yeah yeah the, um, something uh, like that it oh, is a function, but I think the main difference is that the value doesn't change um, unless, until, sorry, until someone changes an input. Um, so, it, so it is kind of like a function, but then once it's, once a user's, you know, defined X and Y in this example, um, then it will just store that result and then they actually it will behave a bit more like a value um, until it's changed. Does that makes sense. Hmm. Um, so yeah, it's when the, like it basically is a function, but it just has that slightly different. Yeah, it, it is a bit confusing that it looks like a function, but um, yeah, it's. I guess it's behaving a bit different than a function because it doesn't actually have arguments or um, a body or anything like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Okay. Right. So um, we're getting pretty. Uh, close to the end of the um, session so um, yeah if I don't know if anyone's got any further questions or any uh, any further um, things to add to um, uh, Jerome's um, talk uh, we'll probably have to move over to the slack group to to to, to carry on that chat um, but yeah if, if everyone would like to um, thank uh, Jerome for doing the talk today. That was it was really good. Um, so yeah, thanks thanks a lot everyone for turning up and thanks especially to Jerome. Cheers. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Everyone. So, yeah. Hopefully see you all next week. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Jerome. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Anna. See you. Bye, everybody.